Welcome back, MTG Joe here, and we have a new format coming to Arena Explore, basically Pioneer Light, the what was written format that we've played the last couple uh, midweek magic events. Uh, so it is all the cards that are Pioneer legal that are on the Arena client. So it's not a one for one port because we are missing some cards uh, with the ban list that's currently in Pioneer. So stuff like Luris's band, um, some of the like cascade or like the find a land cards there's a there's a bunch of land cards in any case um and what i thought we'd do is look at 10 decks you can start playing from day one a lot of these decks what i tried to do was look at existing pioneer deck lists and as much as possible port over versions that could exist in the arena client so like some notable cards were missing are uh, dig through time or if that's not banned or treasure cruise for the phoenix lists uh nykthos shrine to nyx kalidus uh elvish mystic uh so there's a couple cards we are missing in the format so what we're going to try to do is build decks in the best way and i'll kind of explain where possible what cards we've ported over um, I'll post all these deck lists into uh, the video description, so if you want to import any of these. If you have any brews as well that you want to share, go ahead and drop it in the comments. Uh, we'll try to get a nice curated deck list. I believe the uh, actual client comes up on next Thursday. I'm recording this on the 21st, uh, so then you'll be able to play some decks there as well. So up first is Mono Red. Um, and notably with this deck, we're missing two key cards from the Mono Red deck in Pioneer. We're missing Monastery Swift Spear, 1 mana, 1-2 one, 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 Haste Prowess, and we're missing Eidolon of the Great Rebels. Um, otherwise, the deck's pretty much one for one, built in uh, the current Pioneer format. So this is, unlike the historic version, it's not as creature heavy. Uh, you don't have things like uh, the Goblin that gives you other creatures haste. This isn't an Ember Cleave deck, this isn't a Torbrand deck. Um, so in lieu of the Swift Spear, I'm trying out Fanatical Firebrand. I had a trouble with this one drop slot more than anything to play. Um, the prowess is reasonable on it. I wanted to have a haste one drop to hit off the Chandra. And I thought at the very least, Fanatical Firebrand can serve as a removal spell against like turn one elf from your opponent or stuff like that against like the Winona decks. Um, so we have that. We have the Kumana package to make your creatures bigger, pings to turn on Spectacle, which is nice. So you have this with the Spectacle cards and light up the stage and skewer the critics that kind of work as well. Um, play with Fire is some more burn. Soul Scar Mage as a, another prowess threat that gets puts minus 1-1 one, one counters so it can shrink creatures down. Then uh, Eidolon of the Great Revels is a very hard to... Re replace threat. So it kind of just incidental damage for playing uh, certain cards uh, being uh, cheap cards. I think it's CMC three or less. Um, so with Gatekeeper, it's kind of a similar idea. It's some built-in graveyard hate uh, that could kind of tax your opponent. So I wanted to try this out. These two cards are the ones we've plugged in. May or may not be correct, but we'll try it out to see once the format actually comes live. Uh, some Kari Zevs, just an evasive creature that brings a friend around. Uh, the non hundred dollar Ragavan, uh, and then some Bone Crusher Giants uh, as removal and a creature. And then Chandra's really kind of your engine of this deck. You'll notice um, in reality with Chandra, this and this are one mana spells as well because you deal a damage. So it's just ways to enable spectacle. So your deck's fairly low to the ground in terms of curve. Uh, you also have I think twenty two lands in this deck. Uh, full play set of den, some Romnap ruins, and the channel line. So that's mono red aggro. Um, so that's the first one up. Up next, we have explore parhelion combo. Uh, let me just pull up. I'm just kind of comparing back and forth. Mardu Grease Fang. Um, so we pretty much have the entirety of this deck, which is actually really sweet. This is pretty much a one to one port. The only card we didn't have was Urborg uh, in the mana base. Uh, so in lieu of that, I just played a Haunted Ridge. Uh, Urborg just kind of fixes your mana. So what the deck is trying to do is put cards into your graveyard, uh, and then in particular vehicles, Parhelion or Skyship Sovereign, but really Parhelion is the card you want. Uh, and then as early as technically turn two in this deck, uh, but more often than not turn three, 
You have uh, Grease Fang that can reanimate the Parhelion, give it haste and crew, and you can attack for 13 and get two angels left behind. So this combo has been played in Historic. You have stuff like Faithful, Faithful, Faithless Looting. Jeez, can't talk today. Uh, to allow you to kind of channel through your, your deck or kind of loot through your deck. Um, the way we're doing it in this format, you have Stitcher Suppliers put cards in your graveyard. We have a Blood Tokens and Valderan Epiture, as well as Blood Tithe Harvester. You have Fable the Mirror Breaker as well. Uh, Can't Stay Awake is the way you could do it on turn two. If you Stitcher Supplier and happen to hit both Grease Fang and Parhelion, you can Can't Stay Awake. But you can get this out of your graveyard to cast it. You also have Soren, which can bring back the Grease Fang as well. So kind of some redundancy there. So this one's uh, a little bit more graveyard focused combo. Uh, it's very probably unlikely you're going to be hard casting Parhelion. Uh, you might be able to, to hard cast the boat, but more often than not, you do kind of have the backup line too, like three twos that you can copy with Fable seems pretty good, as well as just Crocs up out of the graveyard. Um, so Grease Fang combo, you got some interaction, Lightning Axe, Fatal Push, some card advantage kind of scattered in there as well. Uh, so that's that. Next we have My Winona. Um, this is probably going to be, so right now Winota is the most played deck from MTG Goldfish, 12.5% of the meta. Uh, we are missing a couple key cards. So uh, we have Lana War Elves, we don't have Elvish Mystic, so instead we're playing uh, Gilded Goose. While it does provide ramp and color fixing, it's you're kind of taking a turn off if you don't have food. So it's kind of more of a ritual style effect oftentimes. Um, we are playing the Prosperous Innkeeper as other forms of ramp. These happen to be um, non-humans, which we want to also attack, which is nice. Uh, the deck, the main card we're missing is Voice of Resurgence. So that's what's play sitting in the two drop slot. Voice of Resurgence is good against control, leaves you tokens behind when they cast instants or sorceries on, their, on your turn. Uh, when it dies, it leaves a body behind. So kind of two ways to kind of trigger the ability. So in lieu of that, I am trying out Adanto Vanguard. Um, equally as good against control, not as good against like mono red or stuff like that, but I was having trouble in the two drop slot here really what to play in this particular build, but uh, Vampire Soldier kind of tried this one out. Um, your human hits, so uh, they're playing Thalia as well. Um, I, I don't know if I love Thalia because you do have Fable the Mirror Breaker and Eska's Chariot that kind of get taxed, and in this format uh, like Hidden Strings is in a deck because we don't have all the cards. Phoenix is in a deck because we don't have all the cards. So it's not as likely you need the tax effects. Tovlar is a human as well. You do have a wolf synergy with Tovlar's Huntmaster as well. So Huntmaster alone triggers the ability for this to flip. Uh, this is also a mana sync, which is nice. Uh, gives you some utility there. Uh, you have Brutal Cathar as a human hit in terms of removal. And then Tovlar's Huntmaster. Uh, you have Eska's Chariot to make a lot of bodies. Uh, that can then uh, get hits for humans. And then you have kind of the cool combination of uh, Reflections of Kiki. So you can make a token copy of something and then have Eska's Cherry copy. So you can technically like make a copy of Huntmaster and then cr use that copy to accrue the chariot that then makes a copy of the copy or just kind of shenanigans all around and make a bunch of wolf tokens. Uh, so that's Winona. Um, that's kind of what I think would be one of the better decks in the format. Um, mind you, like the two drop slot is something we'd have to try out a little bit more. Um, up next we have Blue-White Control. So the main card we're missing in Blue-White Control is Supreme Verdict. Uh, in place of Supreme Verdict we're playing Doomscar, uh, but otherwise the deck's pretty much a one-to-one -one port. Uh, this is a Yorion configuration that's looking to just really control the game so you have Kind of your removal package, you have portable holes, you have March of the Otherworldly Light, you have Fateful Absence, you have Wandering Emperor, which is a win condition and removal, Doom Scars, Farewells, all kind of mixed into there. You have Counter Spells and Jawari, Jobin's Veto, and Absorb. Uh, you have Card Advantage in the form of Teferi, Narset, Memory Deluge, Jawari Disruption, or uh, um, sorry, Omen of the Sea, and then uh, some Shark Typhoons as a, another win condition, along with. Hall the Storm Giants, just really good mana in this deck. Um, a lot of utility lands and spells in there. Uh, this is probably going to be another really good deck, uh, one that's really annoying to play against. But uh, like I said, Supreme Verdict is the only card you're missing, and I don't think it's super critical. Um, I'd be curious how low to the ground uh, some of these decks are, where 
you do have a lot of early interaction in terms of 10 pieces of spot removal early uh, at like two mana or less, but given if like there's a, a high impact in terms of Winona or cards like that, you might want to have like another sweeper in there as well. Um, but that is blue-white control. Uh, then we have red-black sack. So there's kind of two sacrifice decks. I'm featuring one here, um, but Jun Sacrifice is another one that's basically uh, all pioneer legal or all legal in the format. It's just like your uh, typical kind of Trail of Crumbs version of the deck. Um, the sideboard's really the only differentiation that plays Storm Breath Dragon, which we don't have in the format. But otherwise, this is a Omni Cult Anvil version, and this is pretty much similar to standard. We're just throwing in. Mayhem Devils, Cauldron Familiars, as well as uh, Witch's Oven. Um, notwithstanding the mana base, this one's actually pretty cheap to build. Uh, if you look, like all these are uncommons, except Thoughtseize really in the main. So you have Thoughtseize, and then your, your dual lands. And lands are always a safe investment. Uh, you have Jengantha as a companion that also gets some utility, but you're just looking to make treasures, sack them for value, drain your opponent. Notably, this version doesn't have Meat Hook Massacre. Um, I'd be curious to see how that plays out. I would almost want Meat Hook over Thoughtseize, um, just to kind of play with that. Meat Hook allows you to have a sweeper, lets you catch up when you're behind, and just to, it's another way to kind of drain out your opponent. Um, so that's kind of interesting. I think that's maybe where I would go, is just put Meat Hook Massacre after some games. But without trying it out, we will uh, kind of go with what's been working in Pioneer at this moment in time. So Red Black Sack. Uh, then we have Explore Mono Black Aggro. Um, so there's a couple versions. There's a Mono Black Aggro version, and then there's a Zombies version that have both been going around. Notably, the main card that we're missing from this is Mutavolt. Um, being able to have a one mana to activate creature land is very effective, especially in the tribal decks. Um, but this is very similar to the historic version. Uh, you have your one drops in like Dreadwander, Knight of Even Legion. Um, we're missing Blood Chief, oh, it's it, Blood Thirsty Adversary, or not that one, I forget its name. Uh, let me pull it up. It, it, Blood Soak Champion, that's the one. Um, but there's the new, co the new creature card from New Compena, the two mana that can uh, come back from your graveyard as well. Uh, so that could be something we play in here, but just aggressively slanted, we're playing Gifted Aetherborn instead. Uh, disruption in the form of Fatal Push, Thoughtseize, you got some Trespassers mixed in there, Rankle, Spawn of Mayhem, all kind of mixed in there. So just kind of aggressive threats, you're trading one for one, you have your lifelink, you have ways to fill your hand with Castle Lockwing, Hive to attack in as well. Uh, we opted to go with the Faceless Haven package uh, in here. Um, I'm thinking 17 Snowlands should probably be enough, but we'd have to play it out to really see with that. But if you want to go aggressive decks, Faceless Haven is the 4-3 uh, that it originally was printed at in this format here. Then we got Explore Fires of Invention. So this one, all the decks I've seen are four colors, and they're really just splashing in the main board for Eska's Chariot. I think you might be able to get away with Wedding Announcements uh, as the card here to make tokens. And really what this is, it's kind of like the uh, Jeskai Luka Fires deck in which you're using Transmognify to find Agent of Treacheries to make copies. You have Fable the Mirror Breaker then that could copy the Agent of Treachery. So you kind of have that combo going there. Um, you have ways to make tokens in like Birth of Melites, the tokens from Fable the Mirror Breakers, uh, Wandering Emperor, Shark Typhoon, and Chariot. Four Sweepers main to deal with the aggro decks some spot removal in March and Rip Apart, notably flexible that they hit a bunch of different types of permanents. Uh, Fires of Invention lets you cast two spells for free each turn, um, so you can put mana sinks into like Omen of the Sea, stuff like that. Um, mana base, so part of the reason why I was inclined to go to uh, three colors over four, and this is something I'll try to test out, while you get the extra cycling lands, you don't get to play utility lands in terms of like castles to use your mana each turn. You're not really using creature lands, stuff like that. You can't really use all the channel lands. Like the only one we're using is Sokuzan because it makes tokens for the strategy. Um, so this is something I'm gonna I'm gonna try it out as it is once the format's up. But then I'll probably 
try just move it to Jeskai. I, I prefer better mana. I don't like that. Like you're playing a lot of like odd lands, and I feel like you know you're gonna get a hinterland harbor, and you're gonna try to cast the rip apart. Um, but again, this is the not a huge representation, about two percent of the meta right now from tournaments. Um, but if you want to go back to those days of agent of treachering all your opponent's stuff, uh, this is definitely something to check out. Then we have Explore Vampires. Um, so Kalidas and Mutavolt are the main cards we're missing in this particular deck. Um, it is a vampire synergy deck, and Soren and Pervious Bloodlords, the, the main kind of glue to this deck. Every mode is super relevant in this deck, so plus one, lifelink encounters onto your vampires, plus two, sack a vampire to lightning helix something. You have the combination of Silver Smoke Ghoul, which can keep coming back each turn, with Soren, so you can machine gun down each turn. Like every turn, you get a free uptick lightning helix. Uh, and then a lot of times, what happens, Soren's comes down on turn three, you minus, and you put into play Champion of Dusk to draw you cards. Uh, the white splash in this deck is for Edgar Charm Groom as well as sideboard cards typically. Um, given that we don't have Kalidas, I'm trying to replicate the lifelink element of it. So we're trying out one Vona Butcher of Megan. Uh, Vigilance, lifelink as well as a way to be some more removal. So I, Kalidus is usually a two of in these decks. So I went uh, one Vona and another Heartless Act just because we're anticipating stuff like uh, Winona as being a prevalent, Winona as, I keep saying Winona. It's not Winona Rider, uh, Winona. Uh, so Fatal Pushes, Heartless Acts, and then you just have your Vampires, Knight of Even Legion, Gifted Aetherborn, Dusk Legion Zealot, Cycles itself, Soren Mirthless, as another card advantage engine kind of mixed in there and we're a black deck for Thoughtseize. I uh, tweaked the mana base a bit because we don't have Urborg, we don't have the uh, Mutavaults, so playing some Hives. Uh, it was too hard to go with the Faceless Havens in this deck because you can't really play the Snow. Uh, Valdera in the state is also another way to kind of get some value from the blood tokens. So that is Vampires. Um, this one I kind of found it off MTG Top 8. I don't know how good it is. You probably will have some disparity. You're going to lose to Agra at times, and sometimes you're going to pop off. It's that Omnath is legal in this format. Um, it typically sees play in the five-color Nib decks, um, but given we are missing Bring to Light and we are missing Sylvan Carry Added, uh, it's a little bit harder to make Nib work in this format right now. Um, but this is Omnath kind of ramp deck that we had with Genesis Ultimatum. Uh, you got Lotus Cobra for Ramp, Growth Spiral, Cultivate, Escape the Wild, and Beanstalk Giant. So really it's just about, you know, ramping ahead, abusing Omnath's ability to generate mana, Genesis Ultimatum, you got the Terror of the Peaks to kind of combo kill your opponent, Kenrith to pump a bunch of mana into and kind of mix from there. Um, the version was playing like Evolving Wilds, I think Evolving Wilds is too slow, um, but I'll give this one a shot. I find these decks either do ridiculous things or stumble and just kind of flood on mana. But another deck just to think to because Omnath is a powerful card. Uh, and then lastly, we have the Zombies deck. So you can build black white zombies with the drain effects with Rally the Ranks. That was a deck in Historic for a while. Um, this version is using the Lords to be a little bit more of an aggressive slanted deck. Again, we don't have the Mutavolts in this particular format. Uh, and I kind of tweaked it a bit to my liking. Um, but you're basically using Lord of the Accursed. So three mana, zombies get plus one, one. And then you can two mana and tap it to give your zombies menace. You have Death Baron, which gives your zombies plus one, one and death touch as well, which plays out nice. So eight lords is really good. Murderous Rider also happens to be a zombie for this deck with removal. Uh, I like playing Meat Hook Massacre in these decks against control and stuff like that. It's a way to drain. Um, and you don't, like, some of your stuff's naturally going to die, like your Decay tokens, stuff like that. Some Heartless Axe, Fatal Pushes Removal. You have Champion of the Parish that gets bigger each zombie. Great Curves at times are like Champion into Lazatep Reaver to make this a 3-3 on turn 2. Crypt Breaker is a card advantage engine in this deck. Uh, top 3 zombies to draw cards. You have Dread Wanderer that could come back from the graveyard. Dark Salvation. Uh, I don't know if we want 1, 2, 3, or 4 of these. Uh, at the very least with a board state, it could be a one mana minus XX. Um, and then with the more mana you pump into it, the more creatures you could kind of get out of it. In terms of the mana base, uh, 
So we could go... We could play Snowlands, and that might be correct. Um, I'm playing Hive of the Eye Tyrants right now. We do have a lot of like black one drops, and I'm worried about just having consistent mana. Uh, it's a little bit more just in terms of like double blacks. You need double black here, um, but it might be right as a snow package for now and play that. This also lets us play the four Castle Lockwain for value. Um, and then Takanuma, pretty much free value there. Uh, and that's it, 10 decks, 10 decks to get started. Um, so notably, like if you look at the meta breakdown, Hidden Strings is the third most popular deck, but we don't have Sylvan Scrying. That's usually um, looks to like combo with, uh, what's the line called? With Lotus Field. So you kind of combo out, generate infinite mana and it's a combo deck. Um, Rakdos Midrange is another deck, um, played something very similar in Historic, um, kind of looking to use like the Fable Mirror Breaker, Kalidus is the main card we're missing out of that deck, uh, and Dreadbor, uh, is it Control, we're missing, it's a Niv-Mizzet kind of Control deck, what we're missing from there is it uses Narset as well as, uh, so you're actually missing a couple cards, Collective Defiance gets played in it, Thing in the Ice gets played into it. Um, some of them will play the, uh, what's it called? What's that card called? Uh, Days Undoing. So each player shuffles their hand and draws seven with Narset. You basically get to do memory, but for three mana instead of six. Treasure Cruise is missing out of that deck. So you're missing some key pieces. Sometimes they play uh, Jace, Vrin's Prodigy. So you can't really build that deck. Uh, Jeskai Ascendancy, we can't play that deck because we're missing uh, Jeskai, the... Just Guy Ascendancy itself, the namesake card. Like I said, is a Phoenix, we're missing Thing in the Ice, we're missing Temporal Trespass, we're missing Treasure Cruise, um, Five Color Humans, we're missing Reflector Mage and Mantis Rider. Uh, and then for like Bant Spirits, we're missing a couple of the Spirits as well. Those are generally like the more popular. We're missing Nykthos, so we can't play Mono Green. Um, Devotion combo, Oath of Nisa we're missing as well. Um, so there's like a couple key cards we're missing here and there, kind of mixed and scattered in, but 10 decks to get you started. Uh, like I said, drop some comments. Once the format's up, we'll test out these decks, see how it plays out. And as always, I, once the, the meta actually starts shaping, I do weekly meta updates for every format on Arena. We get this information from Untapped GG. Uh, so we kind of see the trends, top performing decks. We have win rates to some substantiate. And instead of just saying, you know, this deck's good or bad, we can say, you know, after 10,000 matches, this is the best deck in the format and kind of have numbers to back that up. Um, so thanks for watching, everyone. Hope you have a great one and stay safe out there.